Good day, students. It's wonderful having you back in class today. My name is Mrs. Fakoya Elizabeth, and I will be your chemistry teacher for today's session. Today, we shall be discussing periodic table, learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of the lesson, learners will be able to 1. Write the electronic configuration of elements. 2. State periodic law. 3. Distinguish between blocks of elements and 4. List atomic properties of elements and discuss their variation down the group and across the period. Key vocabulary words are atomic number, atomic radius, ions and ionization energy. A. Atomic number. This is the number of protons in an atom of an element. B. Atomic radius. This is the distance between the center of the nucleus and the outermost electronic shell. C is ions. It's an atom or groups of atoms with an electric charge. And D is ionization energy. This is the energy absorbed in order to remove an electron from a gaseous atom to form a gaseous cation. What is periodic table? Periodic table is a table that shows the arrangement of elements based on their atomic numbers. Mendeleev, in 1869, a Russian scientist, was the first to formulate the periodic law based on the relative atomic masses of the elements. However, the modern version of the periodic law is based on their atomic numbers. The periodic law. The periodic law states that the properties of the elements are a periodic function of their atomic numbers, the groups and the periods. The modern form of the periodic table is divided into eight vertical columns known as groups and seven horizontal rows known as periods, the groups. Elements in the same vertical column form a group. There are eight main groups. Elements in the same group have the same number of electrons in the outermost shell of their atoms. The group an element belongs to corresponds to the total number of electrons in the outermost shell of its atom. Hydrogen does not fit into any group, but for convenience, it is placed in group 1 because of the single electron. In group 0, Helium has two electrons, while the other elements have eight valence electrons. Certain groups of elements have family names. Group 1 elements are called alkali metals. Each member directly follows a noble gas in group 0. Group 2 elements are called alkali et metals. Group 7 elements are called halogens. And group zero elements are called noble, inert, or rare gases. Elements located between groups two and three are called the transition elements. They correspond to the filling of the d orbitals. They are all metals. The periods. Elements in the same horizontal row form a period and are numbered from one to seven. Elements in the same period have the same number of electron shells. That is, elements of period 2 have two electron shells, K and L. Those of period 3 have three electron shells, K, L and M, and so on. The number of valence electrons of the elements in the same period increases progressively by 1 across the period from left to right. Now let us take a look at the short form of the periodic table, that is the periodic table for the first 20 elements. In this table we have 8 vertical columns and 4 horizontal rows. Now the first vertical column, also known as group 1 elements, have the following elements, lithium, sodium and potassium. In group 2, we have beryllium, magnesium, and calcium. In group 3, we have boron and aluminium, and so on, down to group 8. Now, we have four horizontal rows. In the first period, we have hydrogen and helium. In the second period, we have lithium down to neon. 
In the third period, we have sodium down to argon. And in the fourth period, we have potassium and calcium. After this short break, we are going to continue from blocks of elements in the periodic table. Thank you. Welcome back. We are going to look at blocks of elements in the periodic table. Elements in the periodic table are in blocks based on the type of orbital housing their valence electrons. There are five blocks of elements. Number one, the S block elements. These are elements in which the valence electrons are in the S orbitals. They have outermost shell configuration of NS1 or NS2. They are in groups 1 and 2. Examples are lithium with the valence electron in the 2s orbital and magnesium with the valence electron in 3s orbital. They are all metals. Number 2 is P block elements. These are elements in which the last outermost electrons partially fill the P orbitals. They have outer shell structures from NS2, NP1 to NS2, NP5. They are in groups 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 respectively. Examples are boron, carbon, nitrogen, sulfur and chlorine respectively. The S block and P block elements are called representative elements. Number 3 is the noble elements. These are elements with outer shell electronic configurations of NS2, NP6. That is, their highest occupied energy levels are completely filled with electrons that belong to group 0. A few examples are helium with the configuration 1S2 and neon with the outer configuration of 2S2, 2P6. They are all gases. Number 4 is D block or transition elements. These are elements in which the outermost electrons are in the D orbitals. For these elements, two energy levels or shells are partially filled. Example, in scandium with the argon configuration and 3D14S2, both the third and the fourth energy levels or shells are partially filled with electrons. They are all metals. Number 5 is F block or inner transition elements. They have their outermost electrons in the F orbitals. They are called rare earth elements. For these elements, three energy levels are partially filled. Now let us look at group relationship. Number 1. Elements in the same group have the same number of electrons in the outermost shells of their respective atoms. Example, lithium, sodium and potassium are in group 1 and they have one valence electron in their outermost shell. Such a group of elements shows similarities in chemical properties. Number 2. Elements in groups 1, 2 and 3 are metals. Group 4 elements are metalloids. While those in groups 5, 6, 7 and 8 are non-metals. Number 3. Elements in group 1, the alkali metals, are all reactive. Metallic character and reactivity increases down the group. Hence, francium is the most reactive, followed by cesium. Elements in group 2, the alkali et metals, are less reactive than the alkali metals. Number 4. Among the halogen family of group 7, there is a progressive decrease in reactivity down the group from the highly reactive non-metallic gaseous fluorine to the less reactive iodine, which is a solid at a room temperature. Number 5. All the elements in group 0 or 8 are called noble, inert or rare gases. They are stable and unreactive because all the energy levels occupied by electrons in their atoms are completely filled. Now let us look at horizontal relationship. Number one, 
There is a continuous variation in the electronic configurations of the atoms of elements along each period. It leads to variations in physical and chemical properties among the representative elements. This is because electrons enter into different S and P orbitals. Number two, electrons in the atoms of all the elements in the same period occupy the same number of shells. Number three, in going from left to right across a period, metallic character decreases. There is a gradual change from metals in groups 1, 2 and 3 through metalloids in group 4 to non-metals in group 5, 6 and 7 and finally to noble gases in group 0. After this short break, we will continue from atomic properties. Thank you. Welcome back. We are going to look at atomic properties of elements in the periodic table. The main cause of periodicity in the properties of elements in the periodic table is due to the repetition of similar outermost shell electronic configuration at certain intervals. The properties of the elements exhibiting periodicity are 1. Atomic radius 2. Ionic radius 3. Ionization energy 4. Electron affinity and 5. Electronegativity 1. Atomic radius This is the distance between the center of the nucleus and the outermost electronic shell. Variation down the group Atomic radius increases steadily down the group due to increase in the number of electronic shells. The outermost electrons are in energy levels or shells that are far from the nucleus. Variation across the period. Generally, atomic radius decreases from left to right across a period because there is no addition of extra shell. There is an increased attraction of the electrons to the nucleus, which leads to decrease in size when electrons are being added to the same outer shell. Number two is ionic radius. Ions of elements are formed by electron loss or gain. There are two types of ionic radii. 1. Radius of a positive ion, also known as cation, and 2. Radius of a negative ion, also known as anion. Now to radius of a cation. Ionic radii of positive ions are smaller than the corresponding atomic radii because it involves the complete removal of the outermost shell to form a stable noble gas configuration. Example, sodium atom with electronic configuration 281 loses its one electron by the complete removal of the outermost shell to form sodium ion with a noble gas configuration of 28. Now to radius of an anion. Ionic radii of negative ions are greater than the corresponding atomic radii because it involves adding electrons to the outermost shell, making it bigger. Example, chlorine atom with the electronic configuration 287 gains one electron to form chloride ion with the configuration 288. Number three is ionization energy. This is the energy absorbed in order to remove an electron from a gaseous atom to form a gaseous cation. The greater the attraction, the more the energy required to remove the electron from the atom. Variation down the group. Ionization energy decreases steadily down the group due to increase in atomic size. Hence, it will be easier to remove the outermost electron in potassium with electronic configuration 2881, which is far from the nucleus, than in the case of lithium with electronic configuration 21, where the electron to be removed is nearer to the nucleus. Now to variation across the period. Ionization energy increases steadily across the period. This is due to the increase in atomic size as the electron to be removed is strongly attracted to the nucleus. Number four is electron affinity. This is the energy released when a neutral gaseous atom 
accepts one or more electrons to form a gaseous anion. The greater the attraction of the nucleus for the electron, the more the energy released. Variation down the group. Electron affinity decreases down the group due to the increase in atomic size. As a result, the nuclear attraction for the added electron decreases as the atomic number increases down the group. Variation across the period. Electron affinity increases from left to right across a period. The increase is due to the steady decrease in atomic size. Hence, the electron being added is strongly attracted to the nucleus. And number five is electronegativity. This is the power of an atom and a molecule to attract electrons to itself. Variation down the group. Electronegativity decreases down the group due to the increase in atomic size. Variation across the period. There is a steady increase in electronegativity from the left to the right across the period due to the steady decrease in atomic size. Revision exercise. Number one. How many groups and periods are in the periodic table? Number two. In terms of electronic structure, state what is common to all the elements in the same A group and B period. And number three, what are representative elements? Give two examples. Thank you. Stay safe and keep learning. <music>